This video will introduce you the regression analysis assumptions or specifically the assumptions that are least squares estimation principle assumes. So the idea of least squares estimation and regression model is that we have uh, one dependent variable y and in this example we have one independent variable x and we draw a line through the middle of the data, the scatter plot of the data and the regression analysis assumes that these observations are equally spread out around this line so that the dispersion of observations is the same here the dispersion of, as is the dispersion of observations here around the line. So the each individual observation in our data falls somewhere around this line. Some go exactly to the line, some go, go a bit further from the line. We also assume that uh, when we, we know that x is 1 then the variables are normally distributed or the values of y are normally distributed here on the regression line. So that, that's uh, basically a summary of the assumptions and now we will take a look at specific parts of those assumptions. Before we do so we have to talk a bit about what the assumptions mean because there are some misconceptions. For example uh, sometimes students in my classes say that uh, uh, an estimation technique requires that the data are normally distributed and they think it implies that an estimation technique can't be applied when the data are not normal. That has two problems. First of all, we rarely make assumptions about the distribution of observed data and second, the fact that we are not exactly, uh, we, an, ex, an assumption doesn't hold exactly doesn't mean that the estimator is immediately useless. Let's start with examples of, of models and estimators so we understand what assumptions mean. So here is the regression model. It's the y is a weighted sum of the x's, the observed independent variables, plus some error term u that the model doesn't explain. Then we have estimation principles. How do we choose the betas? Which set of betas is the best? And uh, one good rule is the uh, OLS rule, minimize the sum of squared residuals. So we choose the betas here so that the sum of squared residuals what is the difference between the observed value y and, and the uh, fitted value from the uh, betas is as small as possible. So that, that, that's uh, what we have been discussing this part. But that's not the only way of estimating a regression model. For example, we could use uh, weighted least squares. So weighted least squares is the same as uh, OLS except that instead of minimizing a sum of squared residuals we minimize the weighted sum of squared residuals or sum of weighted squared residuals. The idea of weighted least squares is that some observations are more, provide us more information about where the regression line goes than others. And uh, in some scenarios, the weighted least squares is better than OLS. To understand what those scenarios are, we have to understand the assumptions. That, but that's not all. We have also others. So uh, there is feasible generalized least squares which is the same as weighted least squares that uh, estimates the weights from the data. So that makes a bit less assumptions than weighted least squares and there are trade-offs in that. We have also uh, iterated weighted least squares or IRLS and the idea of IRLS is that it weights the residuals iteratively and uh, the, iter the weights from, for the next iteration are based on the previous iteration and this is a good uh, technique when you have outlier observations that I'll talk in another video. So all of these uh, techniques can be used in different scenarios. They all work reasonably well in some conditions. In some conditions uh, one of these rules is clearly better than others. To understand that we have to understand the assumptions. Also um, the models, we can use different models. So it's uh, the regression model is not necessarily the best model. For example, we could, uh, instead of a regression model, we could apply uh, a generalized linear model, which takes the fitted values for regression analysis, applies a function there, and then it doesn't make the assumption that the observations are normally distributed. So that's, that's one alternative model. So you can uh, choose either alternative model or alternative estimator when your data doesn't really fit into the model estimation combination that you are you're planning to use. Here's another one. This is a multi-level model and this would be uh, applicable when you have for example longitudinal data. So you have multiple observations for each company and many companies in the data and you assume that there are some constant differences between companies that persist over time 
and then you would use that kind of model because you are in violation of the random sampling assumption in regression analysis. So there are different things that, that you can use. I recommend always as default op option to go uh, with regression analysis and OLS estimation. If you have a good reason to use something else, then do that. But start with the OLS and regression model because it will tell you something about the data that you didn't know before estimation and it's quick to calculate. Then you go to more complicated things if specific assumptions of OLS does, don't really fit into your research scenario. Okay, so the assumptions are something that we, we do. So assumptions are required for certain proofs. So uh, when we say that OLS uh, requires that the, the error term is normally distributed, it means that uh, it has been proven that OLS is consistent, unbiased, efficient, and the estimates are normal when among other assumptions the error term is normally distributed. So uh, certain proofs require these assumptions. If we can't assume certain proofs, certain things, then the pr proof can't be done. So if the error term is not normally distributed, then we cannot prove that uh, the OLS estimator is uh, un unbiased in, in small samples. It could be, but we can't prove it. So uh, these assumptions imply one important thing and they don't imply another thing. So what they do imply is that the estimator is useful when we are close to these ideal conditions. So regression as analysis assumes that the, uh, the relationships in the, the data are linear. If they are close to linear but not exactly linear, regression analysis will be a useful tool. So these assumptions don't have to hold exactly. If they are close enough, then uh, we will get still good results. Also, it doesn't imply that if an estimator has been proven to be consistent under some scenario, then it's immediately useless in other scenarios. So the fact that something has been proven in some one condition doesn't mean that it does not work in another condition. But it's important to understand uh, the limitations of these different techniques and uh, for that we test the assumptions typically after, after we do our analysis. Now that we have understood that the assumptions are something that should ideally hold and uh, but in practice they hold only approximately and also we have understood that because we are in violation of for example the normality of the error term assumption regression analysis it doesn't necessarily have any severe consequences. It just means that certain things can be proven it could be the thing that we can't prove could still be true. Let's take a look at the uh, actual assumptions. Regression analysis requires four assumptions to provide or OLS estimation requires four assumptions to provide you consistent and unbiased estimates and the unbiasedness property here refers to any sample size. So regression analysis is unbiased regardless of the sample size. You can get unbiased estimates with sample of 10 observations. The estimates will be very imprecise but they're still unbiased. The first assumption is that we have a linear model. So that assumption basically just defines the model and uh, that's, that's all there is to it. Then the second assumption is random sampling. So random sampling means that all observations are independent and each observation in the population has equal probability in, in getting se selected to the sample. This is a feature of your research design and it can't really be tested empirically directly. You can, you can test it uh, in, in some aspects of this random sampling and I will talk about that later. Then we have two other assumptions. Assumption three is there is no perfect collinearity. So perfect collinearity is different from multicollinearity. Perfect collinearity means that uh, if that one or more of the variables, independent variables in the model are completely determined by another independent variable. So for example, if we have uh, three dummy variables, then we uh, that define a categorical variable. If we know two values for the, the dummies, then we can infer the third. That assumption requires that every new, observe, new variable that we enter to the model brings new information about the phenomenon. If we know that, uh, let's use gender as an example. We only need to know whether a person is or is not a male. 
if he is not a male then we know that he's a female or she's a female. Then uh, having a variable for male and having a variable for female would be perfectly collinear because knowing whether a person is a man automatically tells you whether the same person is a woman or not. So that's the, the, the perfect collinearity. The zero conditional mean, this is a technical way of expressing it, but it basically tells you that we assume that the error term is uncorrelated with all explanatory variables. And this is uh, a bit more complicated assumption that I'll explain in another video, but this is also referred to as the no endogeneity assumption. And if we look at this diagram of regression analysis, then uh, this assumption number four can be understood as that the, the, uh, the, where this distribution here is located doesn't depend on the regression line. So the distribution is always exactly at the regression line instead of, for example, the line going here and the observations being uh, somewhere here normally distributed. So that is called the no endogeneity assumption and the endogeneity is a big issue if we want to make causal claims using observational data. I'll return to that in another video. So under these four assumptions OLS is unbiased and consistent. We have still two more assumptions that OLS makes that are required for the consistency and unbiasedness of standard errors and the normality of the estimates. Standard errors are unbiased and consistent if the data or the error term is homoscedastic. So there is uh, no heteroscedasticity. What this assumption means that the observations are equally spread out in the around the regression line. We would have a heteroscedasticity problem if the observations are close to the regression line here but far from the regression line here. So if if instead of observing a band of observations around the regression line, we would uh, observe a funnel shape that opens up or a megaphone shape that opens up. So that's the, the homoscedasticity assumption. These five assumptions together are known as the gauss -Marco, marco assumptions and OLS is efficient under these assumptions. But more importantly, the homoscedasticity assumption is required for the standard errors to be unbiased and consistent. That is important because the t-statistic for our statistical inferences for the p-value requires that both the estimate and standard error are consistent and unbiased. Under those conditions the t-value will follow the t-distribution where the null hypothesis of no effect holds and we get proper p-values. So that's the fifth assumption. assumption. Then the, the final one is that most people are probably are most aware of is the normality assumption. So this is also under, misunderstood. Regression analysis does not assume that any observed variable is normally distributed. Instead it assumes that a uh, error term, the unobservable part, or how much the observations vary around the regression line, that is normally distributed. This uh, rule is actually, uh, this rule implies four and five rules. And these uh, assumptions one through, one through six are called classical linear model assumptions. In practice, uh, the normality of the error term assumption can be ignored because uh, OLS, an, uh, OLS estimator is what we say asymptotically normal. So uh, it means that when the sample size increases towards infinity, then the regression estimates will be normally distributed regardless of how the error term is distributed in the population. In practice, the sample sizes that we use are that are hundred or a few hundred, uh, that is enough for this uh, asymptotic normality to start to kick in. In practice, uh, I have tried to demonstrate scenarios where the lack of normality of the error term would be problematic with observations of 50 or more and I have failed. So uh, I cannot think of a scenario where this normality assumption is a practical concern for applied research. Let's take a summary of the assumptions. So we had six assumptions. 
first all relationships are linear. That can be checked after the model has been estimated. How we check that I'll cover later. Then independence of observations, there must be a random sample. This is a feature of your research design and you can check the independence of observations uh, after estimation under certain uh, scenarios. Perfect collinearity and non-zero variance of independent variables. If that fails, then a uh, regression model cannot be estimated. For example, if you're studying the effects of gender on performance on uh, a statistics course, they, and you only observe women, so you have no variation in gender variable, then you cannot estimate a gender effect. Also, if you have uh, two variables that quantify the exact same thing, then you can't enter both into the regression model. This does not need to be checked because you will know that you can't even, you, if you run running a regression analysis, you will know if this fails because the regression doesn't complete. Then error terms expected value of zero given any values of independent variables. In practice, this means that all other causes of the independent variable that are not included in the model must be uncorrelated with all causes that are included in the model. That's a strong assumption. It can be tested directly after least course estimation, but we can test this assumption with instrumental variables that I'll cover in a later video. Then we have error term has equal variance given any values of independent variables. This is the uh, no heteroscedasticity assumption. This should be checked uh, after estimation because it influences the standard errors of regression analysis. And if you have a heteroscedasticity problem, it is easy to fix. Then error term is normally distributed. Uh, I typically check this because it's useful to know if some of the values are far from the regression line to identify outliers. But other than that, this is not an important assumption.